back at the school, she swaps the boxes. We then present them with what we call the clear box. And this one is structurally identical to the black box, but this time all of the, the walls of the box are made of see-through material. And actually, there's a false ceiling which runs right around the top here, so that all the actions to the top are irrelevant. They're pretend nonsense actions. And the sticker, or the food award, is actually located in this tube at the front. The only action she needs to do is the last one. But for some reason, Jessica sticks faithfully to what she has learned. Even though she can see that the first actions are unnecessary, she carefully repeats them. Finally, she gets the reward. Oh, well done. Very good. It's not just Jessica. Horner has tested children around the world, and they all copy her actions. Not she goes straight for the sweet. This isn't unusual. In trials with a dozen chimpanzees, Horner has found that two times out of three, chimpanzees take the shortcut. It's a start towards explaining why humans and apes are so different. Very good. Chimps don't just follow the leader. They work out the most direct route. They want to get the food as quickly as possible. Imitation and copying accurately is a huge part of our development as humans. It's how we learn language. It's how we learn to interact with objects and acquire cultural behaviors and lots of the complex things that we do as humans. Um, and it's a little as if it's a sort of default for us to copy accurately. So it seems that blindly copying isn't so stupid after all. It's not just reading, writing, and arithmetic. By copying others, we acquire thousands of skills and customs. In Horner's experiment, apes and humans both get their reward, but in different ways. Victoria Horner's experiment reveals the first significant difference between humans and apes. But are there others? So far, we have outpaced our ape cousins. Our achievements are on a different level. We build roads and skyscrapers, invent iPods and atom bombs. We transform deserts into cities and put men on the moon. That's one small step for man. Is it the fact that humans learn by copying? Or is there something else in our DNA that enables us to do all this? We are trying to discover what makes us human. On the tree of life, we're closely related to our cousins, the great apes. There's only a few percent difference in our DNA, but somewhere in that genetic material lies the reason behind our place at the top of the tree. Next experiment is a physics test. How do apes and humans understand how objects move and interact with each other? Even though they appear to struggle with this task, apes do have some understanding of the laws of nature. They know how. They can climb a tree. They can even ride a bike. They may not be able to build cities, but this chimp appears to know enough about physics to be able to build up a pile of blocks without them tumbling down. It seems to understand that it can only place blocks with a flat surface on top of each other. But have we reached the limit of ape ability? The next experiment is a direct face-off between humans and apes. What we're going to do is... The chimps are given the choice of using a heavy or a light ball. Good girl, Mindy. All right. But they just pick one ball at random. 
They don't understand they need to use the heavy ball to dislodge the apple. But will children do any better? Will they grasp the concepts of weight and gravity? Now, which ball are you gonna, which ball will knock the apple out? Okay, you wanna show me? There you go. This five and a half year old gets it right away. In fact, in this experiment, children and chimpanzees learn to balance L-shaped blocks upside down. It's a difficult task that requires good manual coordination, but this boy has got the hang of it. And so has the chimpanzee. Good job, man. Now the researcher does something sneaky. He substitutes one of the blocks for a weighted one that won't balance. Get your other one, man. Get your other one. The chimpanzee believes the block will stand up and keeps trying. And trying. And trying. Although the chimps will continually attempt to stand up the block and will go to great lengths to make it stand up, maybe even occasionally doing something as smart as that, uh, the one thing they won't do is to turn the block over as if attempting to explore some reason why this system keeps failing. But what happens when a child tries the same thing? He realizes something is wrong immediately and investigates. Not only do we instinctively know there's a problem, we want to know why. Apes don't seem to take that next step. For our first ancestors millions of years ago, our ability to ask questions and think laterally was a great leap forward. We no longer relied on trial and error. We began to predict how objects behave. It was a quantum leap on our march to the top of the evolutionary tree. But our desire to understand our world is only part of the puzzle. The real key to our success lies hidden somewhere in the development of our brains. <laughs>